Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild update today. I'm over at Thoroughby getting started on the back half of our short block. So we're going to make that long block in our CT70. And here I have this massive cylinder bore or the jug commonly known as and our thimble of a piston thanks to Trail Buddy. And today Mike is going to make that fit. Right, Mike? That's the plan. <laughs> all right. It's all yours now. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah. Don't hang on to that. It'll change size. <laughs> um, but so we're going to get that board out, honed, and that's going to be done. And then Mark's going to take care of the head, um, get the valves cleaned up, get the seats cleaned up, and then we can go back and assemble everything and then get that engine on the stand completely done and then we'll be ready to slide that up into the frame of the, of the bike. Ooh, that's what I forgot to bring. Okay. Would you? Yeah. Would you That'd be, might as well, that'd be great. Yeah, I forgot we had to do them. Yeah. What do you have to do? Spindles. Since you're gonna have the ride home runner. <laughs> you're such a scars in it. Cool. Well done. Well done. Now we got a hone it. You know, that'd make a great coffee cup we seal off the bottom of it. All right, here's the big test. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, sir. No problem. Well done, well done. Anytime. You sure about that? No. <laughs> Anytime but today. All right, we're over on the other side of the shop now with Mark, and Mark's gonna freshen up the ceiling surfaces on the valves. I uh, had to use a special adapter because of the size of those valves are so puny uh, to reach in here um, with the wheel and such to get on this backside face. And then uh, we'll go over and, and uh, run a stone on the seats as well. Lap them in? Or are we not lapping them in? All right, well, we'll see. See where we're at and then uh, vacuum test it. That'll wrap that up. Should be quick, there's only two. Only two. Famous last words. Looks pretty nice. Oh, looks good. Fresh as a daisy. Basically what Mark's doing right now is he's got brand new stones for the grinding function of the seats. When you buy a brand new one, they're squared off and you use the dresser to come in and put your angle on here. And then of course, as they wear, you have to redress everything. Um, it's really no different than um, then grinding over at the valve uh, station as well. So you redress this surface to get your angle right. And then given the seats that we have and the fact that there's only one, it really makes sense just to do this by hand and uh, you can control it better. Nice.
Well, that works. Yeah, that went pretty smooth compared to some of these where the exhaust seat is super pitted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we weren't bad. It was it needed a little love, but not, not too bad. For a 70, yeah, the 50s are... 50s usually had a little bit smaller valve. Right. <laughs> I love the fact that your thumb's larger than the exhaust valve. <laughs> <laughs> you got a quarter? Anybody got, anybody got a nickel? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I have no change. Oh, there's a nickel. Look at that. There's a give you some size. <laughs> All right. Well, nice. One yeah. more, uh, one more down, Mark. Yeah. Well, at least on your end. Yeah. I guess I'll, uh, I'll go take this and get back to work. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. All right. Hey, we're back here from uh, Thurlby's. We have our freshly cut cylinder bore. And at this point, I'm ready to take the jug and get it put onto our engine assembly. But of course, before we get there, we have to take our piston, get it set up on our uh, connecting rod. But even before we get that far, we need to make sure that our rings fit perfectly into the jug. Now, our rockauto.com tip of the day is make sure you always check your ring gap. So what that is, is when they're installed into the uh, bore, Make sure that the gap is not too tight. There's a spec that goes along with that because if they're too tight, they're going to heat up, bind together, and then lock your piston up. Now, that doesn't matter if you're doing, working on a motorcycle engine or you're working on a car engine. It's all the same idea. All right, where are we at here? Uh, 70 cc, 70 cc ring gap, top and second is six thousandths to 14 thousandths. So pretty good uh, range. Let's see where they're at to start with. All right, so let's take our ring, set it into the bore, oops, set it into the bore here. And I'm just gonna use our piston to push it down a little bit. Get things as square as they can be. And it's at six to Six to twelve. Six to Let's set six to fourteen. We'll start just to see, make sure we have our minimum, and we do. So we got six, and let's just see if we're. I'm sure we're smaller than fourteen. Definitely smaller than fourteen. Right in the middle happens to be nine. And yeah, it's pretty good. It might be nine and a half. Okay, so good. So we have plenty of clearance on our top ring. And our second ring spec is exactly the same. But we'll take that and set it in there as well. That's definitely nine. Both rings out of the box are well within spec, so we're good there. that puts our first part of the assembly together timing wise chain is in it's on the gears it's ready to be assembled up onto the head uh, this gear will go to the camshaft and then you have your uh, mag and flywheel are all together stator flywheel and mag however you want to word it um, there's a T on our flywheel for position and then we have uh, 
and a, and a notch and a case. That'll be our zero point at there. We'll get our head all assembled here with the valves and the rocker arms in the camshaft and get that slid down on here and then pull the gear, loop everything together and button that up and then finish our timing um, adjustment. And then we'll have to figure out how we adjust that tensioner as well. Here we go. This is the camshaft. It's a whopper. No, my hands did not get bigger. This is about three inches long. So, two lobes, one for the exhaust, one for the intake. Thanks to Delta Camshaft, can uh, clean this up for me. It looks absolutely gorgeous, and there is a slight change in the duration, um, but I'm not gonna tell you what the numbers are because Quite frankly, Ken didn't tell me what they are. So if you have a CT70 and you want a modified camshaft, um, call Ken at Delta, he'll set you up. Now, this is kind of interesting the way it goes in here. Uh, you can see that the, normally speaking, right, we would have bearings in here and such. Of course, this uses you know the housing uh, as the bearing surface, but I think it's interesting that they've cut it out so the lobes will go through there. Um, uh, a very odd, odd way to do it, in my mind, probably very normal for somebody. Okay, a little lube, and uh, away we go. Set in the point gap. Um, 12 to 16 is the spec. I'm shooting for right in the middle at 12 or at 14. And let's see. It's like a deck of cards here. Point gap's in this hole. Get your feel the gauge in there. Loosen up the screw. It tends to fall tight on this one, so. As you see, Ben went through and put on the covers here, did a nice little uh, stop motion for us. And uh, I have to add that uh, Jason's Chrome did a wonderful job getting these polished out and chrome. Now these particular pieces are aluminum, so what we chose to do was polish them and then chrome them so they didn't tarnish and just look ugly after a short time. So they're, uh, they're a little fancier than normal, but it'll be perfect. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and put button up the clutch side of things, so we'll get the clutch cover on and get the shift mechanism in. And then, of course, our oil filter screen in. It's a mere suggestion of filtering. And, uh, and then we'll be pretty close, pretty close to having a completed engine and transmission. So continue on. There we have it with our carburetor and intake manifold installed. This engine assembly is done to this point before it slides up into the chassis of the bike. 
Now, I've been reading through some of the comments and I really like the positive ones, of course, and the ones that give me a little more credit, I think, than I deserve. And that's to the point where I just know how everything goes back together. So I gotta show you my little secret here. And uh, thanks to Trail Buddy, <laughs> Ben's wearing it. So this yes. Piece, David, this piece goes here. That's the way we roll. Right on. <laughs> so like always, that's a wrap for today. Get out in the shop, get your work done, and uh, go enjoy the day. We'll see you. All right. Ready? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I need to wear a mask today. <laughs>